This video was made possible thanks to the generosity of our exquisite patrons. We cannot express our gratitude enough to you guys. Hello everyone and welcome to another EDH gameplay video brought to you by Affinity 4 Commander. My name's Martin. And my name's Alex. Today we have our first video that was recorded with our new camera, mounted on our new stand, and edited in our new video software. You should really be able to see the difference, especially in terms of video definition quality. I'd like to thank all of our patrons, past and present, for their support, as we wouldn't have been able to fund these upgrades without you. So without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. Chris's commander is Yarok the Desecrated. His opening hand consists of Sire of Stagnation, Avenger of Zendikar, Soul Ring, Windswept Heath, Breeding Pool, and Fetid Pools. My commander is a Loro Ageless Ascetic. I keep an opening hand of Soul's Attendant, Sun Scorch Regent, Azorius Signet, Dark Steel Ingot, Angelic Accord, Sajiri Refuge, and a Plains. Thomas is playing his Atla Polani, Nest Tender Deck. He keeps an opening hand of Anger. Inferno Titan, Rhythm of the Wild, Sky Shroud Claim, Rout, Temple of Triumph, and the Plains. And lastly, Tom's commander is Psy, Master Thopterist. His opening hand contains Ethereum Sculptor, Retrofitter Foundry, Stoneforge Masterwork, Wayfarer's Bauble, Cyclonic Rift, and two islands. Tom starts things off by playing an island, and then casts Wayfarer's Bauble. He then passes to Thomas. Thomas plays Temple of Triumph, scrying the top card of his library to the bottom before passing the turn. Chris plays Fetid Pools and ends his turn. I gain two life in my upkeep with Aloro's ability, play a Plains and cast Soul's Attendance. I then pass to Tom. Tom plays an Island and passes the turn. Thomas plays Wooded Foothills and ends his turn. Chris plays Breeding Pool, taking two damage to have it enter untapped. He then casts Coiling Oracle, and Martin gains a life thanks to Soul's Attendant's ability. Chris reveals Mere Battlesphere as a top card of his library, which he then draws, and then passes to Martin. I gain two life in my upkeep, play a Swamp, and cast Azorius Signet. Moving to combat, I attack Tom with my Attendant, dealing him one damage, and then pass the turn. Tom responds by sacrificing his Bauble, putting an Island into play before proceeding to his turn. Tom plays an island and then casts his commander, Psy, Master Thopterist. Martin gains a life and Tom casts Retrofitter Foundry, creating a 1-1 Thopter with flying thanks to Psy's ability. Martin gains another life and Tom ends his turn. Thomas responds by paying one life and sacrificing his Fetchland, putting Cinderglade into play before moving to his turn. Thomas plays a Plains and casts Rhythm of the Wild. He then passes to Chris. Chris plays Bloodstained Mire and casts Soul Ring. He then pays one life and sacrifices Fetchland to put Overgrown Tomb into play tapped, and passes the turn. I gain two life, cast Doxiel Ingot, and play Sajiri Refuge. I gain another life and end my turn, to which Tom responds by sacrificing his Thopter to retrofit a Foundry to create a 4-4 Construct. I gain a life from my attendant and Tom moves to his turn. Tom plays an island and casts Ethereum Sculptor. Martin gains a life, Tom makes a Thopter, and Martin gains another life. Why do I get the feeling that I will be saying this phrase an awful lot this game? Next, Tom casts Stoneforge Masterwork, creating a second Thopter. Martin gains a life, and Tom equips his Masterwork to his newly created Thopter before moving to combat. He attacks Martin with his Construct and Psy, dealing him 5 damage, and then passes to Thomas. Thomas plays a Forest and casts Sky Shroud Claim. He searches his library for Canopy Vista and Stomping Ground, having the latter enter tapped and passes the turn. Chris plays a Swamp and casts Sire of Stagnation. Martin gains a life, and Chris then ends his turn. I gain two life and play Esper Panorama, triggering the Sire of Stagnation's ability. I exile the top two cards of my library, Chris draws two cards, and I cast Sun Scorch Regent. I gain a life and then move to combat. I attack Thomas with my attendant, dealing him 1 damage, and Thomas informs me that he will not be forgiving this act of violence. I then pass to Tom, who responds by sacrificing a Thopter to his foundry to create another 4-4 construct, and I gain another life. Tom then proceeds to his turn. Tom plays an island, X on the top 2 cards of the library. Chris draws 2 cards, and Tom then casts Palladium Mirror, making another Thopter token. Martin gains 3 life and puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on his dragon, 
and Tom equips his Stoneforge Masterwork to one of his constructs. Moving to combat, Tom attacks Martin with both of his constructs and Martin declares no blockers. Tom responds to this by sacrificing a Thopter to retrofit a foundry, creating a 4-4 construct. Martin gains a life and takes 10 damage, and Tom passes the turn. Thomas begins his turn by casting Rout and I gain a life. Tom responds by sacrificing two creatures to his commander's ability, drawing a card, and the board is then wiped of creatures. Thomas then plays the planes and ends his turn. Chris casts Tyler's Tracker and then plays Temple of the False God. He makes a clue and then casts his commander, Yaduk the Desecrated. With nothing more to do, Chris passes to Martin. I gain two life in my upkeep and cast Soul Warden. That ability looks awfully familiar. Next I cast Cradle of Vitality and then pass the turn. Tom casts Ponder, rearranging the top three cards of the library before drawing one of them. Next he plays Inventor's Fair and recasts Psy, gaining Martin one life. Tom then ends his turn. Thomas starts his turn by casting his commander, Atla Palani, Nest Tender. He chooses to give the creature haste with Rhythm of the Wild and I gain a life from my Warden. Thomas then plays Boris Garrison, returning Cinderglade to his hand, and passes to Chris. Chris plays Maze of Ith, creating two clues thanks to the combined effects of Yarok and Tireless Tracker. Next, he casts Avenger of Zendikar, creating 12 zero one plant tokens. Now that is some serious value. Martin gains 13 life, and Chris passes the turn. I gain two life in my upkeep, and then cast Propaganda. Good luck swinging those plants at me now, Chris. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Tom casts Founder Inspector, creating a Thopter, and gaining Martin two life. Next, he casts Hedron Crawler, making another Thopter and gaining Martin two more life. Tom then passes to Thomas, who responds by tapping his commander to create a 0-1 egg token with Defender. Martin gains a life, and Thomas then moves to his turn. Thomas plays a forest and creates a second egg token. I gain a life, and Thomas then casts Inferno Titan, giving it haste of his enchantment. I gain yet another life, and Thomas chooses to deal 1 damage to each of his eggs and my Warden with the Titan's ETB, killing all 3 creatures and activating Atlas ability twice. He puts Justani to Lesnia's voice, and Emrakul the promised ending to play this way, which is a totally fair and balanced thing for a 4 drop creature to be able to do, and gains 13 life when Emrakul enters the battlefield thanks to Justani's ability. Thomas chooses to give both of his new creatures haste and then moves to combat, where he makes a deal with Chris to deal me some damage. Look at my board state compared to everyone else's. Why am I the target for this aggression? Thomas attacks Chris with his Titan and chooses to deal me 3 damage with the Titan's attack trigger. Chris then removes the giant from combat with his Maze of Ith and Thomas passes the turn. Chris plays Windswept Heath, making 2 clues and putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each of his plants. These EDB triggers are really getting out of control. He then pays a life and sacrifices the fetch on to put a forest into play, creating two more clues and putting a further 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on his plants. Not yet finished, Chris cuts Mere Battle Sphere, creating 8 1 1 Mere tokens. Chris then ends his turn, and Martin responds by sacrificing his Esper Panorama to put an island into play before proceeding to his turn. I gain 2 life and cast my commander. Loro, Ageless Aesthetic. Next I play Demir Aqueduct, returning a swamp to my hand, and pass to Tom. Tom gains a life from Inventor's Fair in his upkeep, plays an island, and then passes the turn. That's a lot of blue money you've got open there. Thomas replays Cinderglade, and then casts Ilhog the Raise Ball. Oh boy. He has the piggy enter with a plus one plus one counter, gains seven life from Tristani, and then ends his turn. Chris responds to this by sacrificing a clue to draw a card and puts a plus one plus one counter on his tireless tracker. He then moves to his turn. Chris casts Panharmonicon, which is quite frankly ridiculous with his commander, and then plays Command Tower. Sadly for Chris, Panharmonicon doesn't trigger for lands, so he only makes two clues and puts two plus one plus one counters on his plants. Such a shame. Next, Chris moves to combat, paying two mana to attack Martin with mere battle sphere. He taps 8 Mears with the Battle Sphere's ability, giving the Sphere plus 8 plus 0 and dealing Martin 8 damage. Martin then declares no blockers, taking an additional 12 damage, and Chris passes to Martin. 
I gain 2 life in my upkeep and then use Alora's ability to draw a card and have everyone else lose a life. I also activate Cradle of Vitality, putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Aloro, and play a Plains. Next I cast Demir Signet, followed by Revenge of Ravens. Chris expresses his anger towards my token army hating enchantments, and I pass the turn. Tom responds to this by sacrificing his Inventor's Fair to search his library for Mystic Forge, and puts it into his hand before proceeding to his turn. Tom draws for turn, and once again ends his turn without casting any spells. Clearly he is up to something. Thomas takes this opportunity to cast Sundering Growth, and with the spell on the stack, activates Atlas ability. He makes an egg, destroys Panharmonicon, and populates the egg, making another one. Thomas gains two life from Tristani's ability, and then moves to his turn. Thomas plays Terramorph Expanse, and then passes to Chris without casting anything. Uh, guys, you're supposed to be doing things. Chris responds by sacrificing two clues to draw two cards, and puts two plus one plus one counters on his tracker. He then proceeds to his turn. Chris casts Noxious Gearhold, destroying Emrakul and Alora with his double ETB triggers. Chris gains 20 life, plays Temple of Mystery, makes two clues, puts two plus one plus one counters on his plants, and scries one twice. Man, that's a lot of triggers. Moving to combat, Chris pays 2 mana to attack Martin, once again sending a mere battle sphere in his general direction. He taps 8 mirrors to deal Martin 8 damage, and give the sphere plus 8 plus 0. And Revenge of Ravens deals Chris 1 damage, and gains Martin 1 life. Martin then takes 12 damage from the battle sphere, and Chris passes the turn. I gain 2 life, play a planes, and then recast my commander. With nothing more to do, I end my turn. Tom casts Mystic Forge, creating a Thopter token. He looks at the top card of his library, and then pays one life to exile the card with his Forge's ability. Next, Tom casts Conjurer's Bauble from the top of his library, creating a Thopter, and then casts Trophy Mage. He searches his library for Ashnod's Altar, and puts it into his hand. If any of you have seen Tom's Grenzo deck in action, then you already know how crazy this card is under Tom's control. Tom then checks the top card of his library, casts the altar, and makes a Thopter. He then passes to Thomas, who responds by populating an egg with Tristani, gaining a life, and sacrificing Terramorphic Expanse to put a planes into play tapped. Thomas then moves to his turn. Thomas casts Hour of Promise, searching his library for Reflecting Pool and Temple of the False God, before putting both of them into play tapped. Moving to combat, Thomas attacks Chris with Inferno Titan, using his trigger to assign one damage to each of his eggs. That is some sweet interaction, and I love it. The eggs are destroyed, and Thomas puts World Spine Worm into play, followed by Avenger of Zendikar. He makes 11 zero, 1 plant tokens of the Avenger's ability, and reveals Kratohuf Behemoth with his final egg trigger. Damn, that's some scary stuff. Thomas has the three big boys enter with plus one plus one counters, gaining 38 life, and Chris uses Maze of Ith to remove Inferno Titan from combat. A wise decision. In a second main phase, Thomas plays Temple Garden, having it enter tapped and puts a plus one plus one counter on his plants. Pleased with how that went, Thomas passes the turn, and Chris responds by sacrificing a clue to draw a card. He puts a plus one plus one counter on Tyler's tracker, and proceeds to his turn. Chris plays Lumbering Falls, creating two clues and putting two plus one plus one counters on his plants, which are now 10 11s by the way. Chris then asks for everyone's life total, causing everyone to shift uncomfortably, and casts an overloaded cyclonic rift, clearing the board of those pesky blockers. Moving to combat, Chris attacks with all of his creatures, dealing enough damage to kill everyone all in one swing. Hashtag Cyclonic Rift is OP in EDH. Well, that's it for another game. Atler and Yarrick really got to show off just how powerful they can be as commanders. Don't forget that there are three easy ways to show your support for the channel. Liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and leaving us a comment. I read every single one. And if you really want to help us out, consider supporting us on Patreon, and follow us on Twitter. Links to both are in the description. That's all for now, we'll see you next time.